so, but, but let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of it. So the sources of the data. So mm -hmm. my understanding is that you will get pretty different results when you look at, for example, the web of science data or metrics versus Google yes. Scholar. Uh, first, publish or perish, it uses Google Scholar, doesn't it? It does, but um, that's how it started um, in 2006. But um, by now, um, it actually um, allows access to five different data sources, or actually six if you count Google Scholar profiles. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's also um, access to Crossref, which is a, a data source that's populated by uh, publishers, uh, Microsoft Academic. Um, which is another data source that gives results that are um, pretty similar to Google Scholar. Um, and then there is also Scopus and the Web of Science, but only for people who have a subscription or whose university has a subscription um, to those services. So yes, the, the, the difference between the data sources is vast, um, depending on the discipline. Uh, I would say if you work in uh, say cell biology, um, there isn't a huge amount of difference between uh, the citation scores you get in the Web of Science and the citation scores you get in Google Scholar. But if you work in business or the social sciences more generally, uh, there can be a huge difference between uh, the number of citations you get in the Web of Science and the number of citations in Google Scholar. Um, and on average, I would say for academics in, in, in business and economics, it might be three times as many in Google Scholar. But it all depends Not 30%, on... Not 30%, three times, right? Three times, yes. Yeah, that's a yeah. big difference. Yeah. So what yeah. you would do with that? I mean, what advice would you give both to the researchers, but also department chairs, deans? I mean, how do we then, what's the proper way to do it then to assess productivity of a researcher? I would say go for either Google Scholar or Microsoft Academic um, because both are pretty comprehensive in terms of what they cover. So uh, the Web of Science only covers a subset of journals and in some disciplines they might cover say 90-95% of the journals that are of any standing. But in other disciplines they might only cover 30-40-50% that might be increasing, and it has increased over the years, but still in the arts and humanities and the social sciences, there is an underrepresentation. But even more important, I think, um, things like books and book chapters yes. and conference papers and mm -hmm. software, you just said, Publish Your Paris is my most cited work. Software will obviously not be included in the Web of Science or Scopus. It is included in Google Scholar. Anything that is cited is captured in Google yeah. Scholar. 